Hello everyone and welcome to our first online service here at St James. It's really good to welcome you here today. My name's Josh Maynard, I'm the vicar of the church and it's my privilege to be able to lead us through our worship today. All of us will be aware of the challenges that coronavirus are bringing to all of us. Many of us are living with uncertainty and some of us will be experiencing anxiety. In this context, I want to say that at St James, we want to continue to be a place where we can meet with God, where we can experience his presence and where we can experience community with one another. St James is still very much open for business. We are the people of God. We are the church and we will continue to meet. Now, of course, we cannot at this time meet in our church buildings, but we can meet in other ways. We can meet like this through online services. We can also meet through phone calls, uh, video conferencing and through letters through the post. We want to continue to meet. Jesus said where two or three are gathered in his name, that he would be there present. So today, whether you're watching your TV screen, whether you're on your phone or whether you're at your computer, we can meet together. Now, before we uh, start our worship, it wouldn't be a proper worship service, would it, if we didn't have a few announcements? So I just want to start by uh, mentioning a couple of things. The first is that we really want to encourage small groups to keep on meeting. Now, you may not be able to meet in your homes, but you can meet over conference calls. And if you've got people in your group who can set that up, great. If you're struggling to do that, do talk to us and we can help you set that up. Also, if you're not part of a small group and you'd like to be, I'd really encourage you to be, particularly at this time, as we're having to isolate ourselves more. And that might be for a prolonged period. Really encourage you to be part of small groups so you can encourage one another. We're going to be setting up some pop up small groups so that we can meet together and share together. If you'd like to be part of one of those, please do be in contact and we can then set up some of these groups. Uh, Finally, these and other announcements will be on the website. You can go to our media page and then our newsletter and we'll be regularly updating our our newsletter uh, so that you can receive that. Now, as we begin our service, let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we just wanna thank you that you are with us. Thank you that you are sovereign. Thank you that in you is perfect peace. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here to come now. Come and minister to us. Come and speak to us. And Lord, in this time, we want to worship you and praise you. We also want to pray for this world that you would bring your peace, that you would bring your healing, that you would protect the vulnerable. And I just pray for all of us as we meet together today, that you would bless us and fill us with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In a moment, we're going to have a talk from Anne. But before that, we've got a Bible reading and also uh, some prayers from Jojo, uh, who's going to lead us in some prayers around mother, Mothering Sunday. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day, Sarah. After waiting to have a child for so many years, you must be overjoyed to have Isaac. Today is about you and all those who are still waiting. Happy Mother's Day, midwives of Israel. You risk your own safety to ensure the survival of countless children. Today is about you and all those who care for children and call it work. Happy Mother's Day, daughter of Pharaoh. By welcoming Moses and your family, you showed so much love Today is about you and all foster and adoptive parents. Happy Mother's Day, Naomi. You walked with Ruth as a friend and cared for a child as your own grandchild. Today is about you and all grandmothers and extended family who care for children. Happy Mother's Day, Hannah. You let go of Samuel, even though it hurt you. Today is about you and all those whose children are not living with them right now. Happy Mother's Day, Anna. Life didn't go as you had hoped, yet you found peace and worth in your service to God. Today is about you and all those experiencing heartache at how things have turned out. Happy Mother's Day, Lois and Eunice. Your faith changed Timothy's life. Today is about all those who are playing a part in raising the next generation. Mother's Day is about you, whatever your role might be.
I'm now going to lead us in some reverent Sunday prayers. Dear God, thank you that you have comforted us as your children. You have led us with cords of kindness and bands of love. You have provided many good things for us and cared for us when we have had little. Thank you for being like a mother to us. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the woman you put in our lives who have cared for us, for mothers and carers of every type, aunties, grandmothers, and the many women who help raise us. Where we miss them, may you comfort us. As we pray for each other, we recognise that sometimes mothers are not perfect like you. Where we are hurt, may you restore us. Amen. We pray for those who are part of caring for children in all sorts of different ways, for teachers and those in education, social workers and support workers, youth and children leaders, nurses, doctors, therapists and all those in healthcare. Fill them with the fruit of your spirit and equip them for the work you have set before them. Amen. We pray for children who are currently not with the mother figure or parents they need or are facing uncertainty and instability. Would you pour out your love, comfort and peace? Amen. Help us to each follow the model of motherly love that you set in your, in your word and in our lives. May we reflect that goodness into the lives of all we meet. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42, and it's entitled The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone who, as he had a need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. Hello everyone, um, it's really amazing to be speaking to you through the magic of technology. Um, do bear with me whilst I get used to speaking to a camera rather than to a room full of people. Um, the first thing, the very first thing I want to say is Happy Mother's Day. And um, I think it's in going through all of this um, that we've been going through makes you realise what really matters. And uh, it's those that we love and those that, who have loved and nurtured us. And uh, no matter how you're celebrating Mother's Day today, um, we want those people who have been mothers to us to know that we love them and we value them, um, whether they're near or far. And um, the Bible says that love never fails and that love uh, that we've received um, never fails. So be encouraged. Um, I've written this sermon several times over this week and um, it's not a usual sermon and this has not been a usual week. Um, when I started writing this sermon on Monday, I envisaged standing in front of you all and the church um, being full um, with our wonderful church family. And um, now I'm just standing in front of an empty church and um, I don't know when I'll see you all again. And um, I just want to say that that's really sad. You know, there's lots of things that we can have hope in this situation in God, but there's also pain. And um, it's really sad to me that we can't meet together. I can't help but be sad. But at least you get to see me over the video, even if it's just over video. Um, I hope it's a good thing. And um, it's just such a privilege to be able to still speak to you and rather than speak to you in the church building, to be speaking to you in that um, comfort of your own homes, to be coming to you in your own homes. On Monday, um, I don't know if you remember Monday, it feels like a lifetime ago, my brother-in-law texted me and he said, what does God think about coronavirus? And this question has consumed my week. Where is God in all of this? 
What's God up to? And the main thing that I think I want to tell you today is that God is right here in the middle of all of this. If you look to your left, God is there. Look to your right. Oh, wrong way around. God is there. God surrounds you. He's not confined to a church building. God's not practicing social isolation somewhere up there in heaven with the angels and Jesus standing two meters apart from one another. God's not distant. He is closer than your breath and nothing can change that. The news doesn't say it and the government and the scientists can't say it, but the church can. God is with us in this. He's here. He hasn't been scared away. What's happening isn't a surprise to him. It hasn't been caught off guard. Um, Self-isolation can't isolate us from God. He's with you always and he will never, ever let go. And we can believe that. This is a time when we see what our faith is made of. All those years of Bible reading and prayer and coming to church have been preparation for such a time of this. And I believe that God is asking the church the question, where is your faith? Is it something that's just for show on a Sunday? Or will you take your faith and plant it into the private place, into your homes where no one will see you, but God will be there? Matthew 6 verse 5 says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Before coronavirus made us, Jesus asked us to take our faith into our daily lives, to bring our faith into our homes, into our bedrooms, into our sitting rooms, into our kitchens, to meet with God in the unseen places of our lives and experience his intimacy there. The early church had a daily faith. Um, In the passage that Bridget read, it says, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together. Faith was a part of their everyday lives, not a once a week faith. And this is an opportunity to take our faith and really ingrain it into our daily lives. And we've been thinking a little bit as a, as a leadership team, how we might want to shape our routines and our patterns in this time of change. And this is an opportunity to find routines and shape them around Jesus. Perhaps you might want to think about as a household, how you can pray together. And we're having our, we're keeping up our meeting together on Sundays online. Izzy's looking at resources for families. Maybe at dinner you might want to practice thanksgiving. You might want to all go around and say something you're thankful for. Maybe at lunch you might want to read a Bible verse. Now is the time to think about those new routines that you want to put into your life when everything else is being stripped away. Now is a chance to build your life around your faith. We're not stopping church. Church is not a service or a building. It's a living, breathing, loving community of people that overcomes physicality. You are the church. St. James has a connection and a bond that is beyond physical. We are family. Coronavirus doesn't change that. We are a family and even so, more so now. Um, The passage that Bridget read was actually the passage I was meant to speak on this week. Um, We've been going through a series on mission and what mission is and um, I was meant to be talking to you about people and place. I just think this is just another sign of how God knew what was happening. He knew that um, we would need to hear this message today about mission being done as a family, about the importance of community. The world is full of social distancing, but this is not what Jesus is about. We have, to do, we have to practice physical distancing, that's a reality, but we don't have to practice social distancing. 
we need one another. We have been created to live in community. And that's why this passage that Bridget read about the early church in Acts is so compelling. You read this passage and my heart longs for that kind of lifestyle, for the lifestyle of the early church. It's attractive. They had everything in common. They met every day. There was sincerity, commitment, joy, praise and favour. They were family in the best sense of the world, of the word. They devoted themselves to God together and it was contagious. We have a choice. We can draw up our barriers. We can withdraw into our houses and not just physically withdraw, but socially withdraw. We can binge watch TV and shut ourselves away. Or we can choose to reach out. We can use this time that God has given us to connect with the people around us on a deeper level. And I've heard so many encouraging stories of the community at St. James, uh, phone calling, doing Luro drops, making cakes for one another, offering help online, connecting in home groups over social media. And I just think it's incredible how people have rallied around and tried to support one another. And if you don't feel if, like you're getting the support that you need, then contact us, we're available. Now is not the time to isolate ourselves socially. Now is the time to think about how we can connect with one another in new ways, to reach out with one another, to phone friends, to check on our neighbours, to connect with God. And in this time of testing, we'll see what our faith is really made of. Generosity marked the early church. Our passage that we read said they had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. The reality is that coronavirus is going to widen the gap between those who have and those who don't. And it's going to hit the poorest and most vulnerable. We're going to have opportunities to share God's generosity in ways we never dreamed of. And our God is a generous God. He provides for you everything that you need. And he wants to use us to provide for the people around us, both physically and spiritually. The thing is that we can't give what we don't have. And I know that there's some people who are going to be wondering, how on earth am I going to cope with my work closing, with the schools closing, um, with being shut in and not seeing anyone? I know that there's some real needs out there at the moment and there's so many unknowns. But at this time, we can know that we have a generous God. We can know that we can trust God with our very lives. We can ask God to provide for us what we need and to provide more than enough to give away. Matthew 7 Verse 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Those who seek find. And those who knock, the door will be opened. I think God's really asking us to take him at his word. God is saying, ask and it will be given to you. God is saying that he will provide for us. So let's turn to God. Let's turn to his strength. Let's realise that we can't do this without him and trust him to see us through. Now, as a community of St. James, we've got lots of ideas about practically how we can turn to God and practically how we can share God's love with this community. And I think these ideas will evolve over time. I thought it'd be helpful to share some of them with you the first thing that we're thinking is, is working out how to open up the church for personal prayer. We're looking into setting up devotionals that we can post on Facebook and email out from church leaders and members. We're looking at how to support our older members and community in the long term. And we're going to start up pop-up small groups for those who aren't in a home group at the moment and uh, who want to kind of connect with one another. 
we're thinking about how to include those who can't use technology and how to keep everyone connected. We're still on a journey of discovering how things will look for St James. This is really unprecedented times that we're in and I'm sure we'll make mistakes, but we'll try new things and we'll stand on God's unchanging love and truth. Please be on this journey with us. Please keep connecting with us and one another. Keep emailing and phoning. And if you're listening to this talk, email me. It's anne at stjam.es. Uh, get in touch. I'd love to keep in touch with you. I really miss chatting with people on a Sunday after the service, but we can do that remotely. Do share your ideas with us. But more than that, be encouraged to take initiative. I've been praying about this time and I think God, that is, God is saying that as leaders, there's things we can put in place, but to really make a difference to our community, church, church members need to rise up and church members are rising up. Now is the time to look around your neighbourhood, to look around your friendship groups and ask God how he wants you to reach out. It might be a card, it might be an encouraging word from a distance, an offer to help, a phone call, a care package. Don't underestimate the value of small acts of kindness. Ask God what he needs from you, what he wants you to do in this time. Looking out for others is at the very heart of our faith. And it's one of the things I love about the church. We look out for others. We don't just look out for ourselves. Our faith is not of selfish panic buying, but one of peace and love for others. We overcome evil with good. We have, to hold, we have hope to hold out in this dark time. We're dealers of hope and light. The world is looking for that light at the moment. It's not about us trying harder. It's about letting God's light shine out of us. Lots of organisations are out there helping practically, but we offer a hope that goes far beyond the grave. We have eternal life to share with those around us. We have the power that raised Jesus from the dead living in us. And when I was praying, I got this picture of people from St. James spreading colour wherever they went, wherever they were, just spreading colour in darkness and black and white. I feel like God's saying there's going to be places of joy and fun in the midst of all this fear and panic. Before I finish, I just really believe that God wants to give you his peace. Right here and right now as you're listening to this. And I just want us to pause and receive that peace. Jesus says, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I speak peace to your hearts now. God does not give us a spirit of fear. God gives us faith. God loves us and he's with us and he's here for us. And whatever happens, we have a home in heaven. Whatever happens, we are secure in God's love. The Church of England have called a national day of prayer for today, the 22nd of March, and they're inviting people to light a candle at 7 p.m. and put it in their windows. And just as you do that, if you want to, to take part of that, as you do that tonight at 7 p.m., just really encourage you to pray for God's peace. They're also inviting people to say the Lord's Prayer every time they wash their hands and to pray for the sick and to pray against fear. I think we all know that we can't face what's coming without God's help and without his strength. 
And so with this in mind, I just want to end by praying for our nation, for our community and ourselves. So let's pray. Lord God, I thank you that you're with us. I thank you that even now, wherever we are, you are there. That your power is mighty to save. Lord, I pray now that you pour out your peace into our hearts. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for our government. We pray for our health service. We pray for all those in leadership, Lord. May you give them wisdom. May you give them strength. May you give them supernatural answers to these problems. Lord, we pray for a vaccine. Pray that you give those scientists working on it just supernatural insight that you'd really speed up the process. We pray for that vaccine in faith. We pray that you provide the health service all that they need to tackle this epidemic. And Lord, we pray for our community. We pray for those in need. Lord, we pray that you would link us up to those who need our help. We pray for that you would provide for those people who are going without work and without childcare and without school. Lord, we pray that in the midst of all that is happening, you would be our sure and firm foundation. That you would provide everything that we need. And that you'd help us to see ways we can look out for one another and love one another with your love. And Lord, we pray for our families and for ourselves. We pray for your protection over us. Pray that you would surround us with your love. We pray that many would call on your name and be saved. And we give our church family to you. Pray that this would be a time when relationships go deeper, when we draw closer together. We pray that in your mercy you would bring good out of this. In Jesus' name, Amen. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the hearts of the sea though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen.